Do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. Hyperbisic ontology, part nine, concern and desire. Proceeding down the tree of life, we come to the level of the conscious and unconscious psychological sephiroth. In the Golden Dawn's use of the tree, these principally correspond to the seven classical planets and their symbolically relevant mental functions. My own version of these attributions is as follows. Bina to Saturn is the imaginary. Hesed to Jupiter is concern to be defined below. Gabura is Mars is desire. Tifereth is soul is self-consciousness. Netzach or Venus is affect. Hode or Mercury is intellect. And Yesod or Luna is the imagination, not to be confused with the imaginary. Given that we are specifically concerned with the Golden Dawn, magical systems interpretation of the Tree of Life, as further developed and expanded in the Thelemic tradition, I will not here attempt to adequately summarize the complex history of Jewish and Christian Rosicrucian Kabbalistic lore regarding the Lower Sephiroth. Instead, I will focus on interpreting the planetary Sephiroth in terms of the Lacanian interpretation of the Tree of Life that is my organizing theme in these videos. Hesed is the fourth Sephira counting down the tree from Kether, but it's the first to appear below the abyss. Hesed therefore stands for the most general characterization of the psyche as a manifest phenomenon, in distinction from its structural undergirding in terms of the symbolic, imaginary, and the real symbolized by the supernals. Along these lines, I would conceptualize Hesed in terms of Martin Heidegger's concept of care, German Zorge as a noun or Zorgen as a verb, and its synonym concern or Bezorgen. I read the magical mapping of the various layers of the Tree of Life as equivalent to Martin Heidegger's existential analytic that seeks to unpeel the equiprimordial structural sheaths of human existence, which he famously dubs Dasein, a German word meaning being there or an existent. Heidegger's ontological analysis of Dasein, or human existence, recognizes the epistemic priority of the linguistic construction of human world experience, for example, in his equally famous aphorism that language is the house of being. Heidegger's existential ontological version of linguistic constructivism bears comparison with Lacan's reading of Freud in similar terms. Heidegger, however, denies that Dasein is equivalent to the phenomenon that psychoanalysis thematizes as the subject or the psyche, arguing that his own philosophy is more primordial than those of his modern competitors, whether these be Freud, Marx, or whomever. Without denying the importance and originality of Heidegger's thought, I will be more generous in bringing existential, psychoanalytic, historical materialist, and other modes of thought into dialogue in the present reading of the Tree of Life. In doing so, I follow and endorse the interpretation of Heidegger's philosophy in mid-20th century French philosophy, particularly as represented by the work of Jean-Paul Sartre and his intellectual successors, especially including Lacan, all of whom were heavily influenced by being in time. According to Heidegger's book, Being in Time, the basic existential phenomenon of Dasein's being reveals itself as a care. The phenomenon of care characterizes the transcendental hermeneutical horizon or ontological conditions for the possibility of being, in terms of which Dasein's multiple modes of being are possible. Heidegger insists, quote, that no sooner has Dasein expressed anything about itself to itself than it has already interpreted itself as care, unquote. Human existence is inseparably concerned with its world of historical involvements. It is always already absorbed in the world of its concern, and all possible modes of human activity are grounded existentially in care, which is presupposed as their hermeneutical horizon. Dasein's being is constituted by its relations to its environment and to the projects and roles associated with its historical context. Concern is expressed as solicitude, German Fürsorge, literally concern for, when related to other instances of Dasein, such that, quote, 
Dasein is essentially for the sake of others, unquote. Concern is also Dasein's openness to the interpolation of its social possibilities by historical and ideological dimensions. Dasein's solicitude towards its social life world is simultaneously its openness to the solicitation of the linguistic symbolic order and the determination of its being in a circuit of dialectical double reflection. Concern, therefore, signifies Dasein's ontogenetic situation, whereby Dasein both interpolates and is interpolated by the symbolic order. As such, Dasein's ontology is socially structured, and it cannot separate its existence from the interpersonal domain constituted by the symbolic order. To reject society is a socially motivated act. There is no escape from our involvement with other human existence. The magical implication is clear. Our true will cannot be antisocial, except provisionally to politically adjust a contextual imbalance. The true will always already is a concern for others, and addiction, abuse, and other exclusively narcissistic behaviors that sunder us from our relationship to others are ruled out as expressions of the true will by the criterion of care. I further relate Heidegger's concept of concern to the quality of mercy and loving kindness that translates the Hebrew word hesed. In the context of traditional Torah religion, mercy is the term opposed to judgment, being the relationship of intimacy and favor with God enjoyed by those who follow his commandments which the rabbis Hillel and Joshua inform us are epitomized in the ethics of love for the neighbor. Judgment, on the other hand, indicates the consequences reserved for those who do, not, who do what is immoral in the sight of the paternal divine gaze. The hermeneutical correlation of concern and mercy signifies that the human need for social relationship is not simply arbitrary, but has an ontological basis at the deepest strata of our being. Love undergirds the human condition. To turn away from love is to reject what is fundamentally human about us. Additionally, in a neo-pagan magical context, Hesed corresponds to the expansive qualities of the planet and deity Jupiter, whether symbolized by the impressive Jovian satellite system or by the gods' leadership over the heavens and the Hellenic pantheon. Hesed's qualities encompass and establish the system of the lower Sephiroth. As for the Supernals, they can be represented in a Hellenic religious context by the three fates, whose authority lies beyond the governance of Jupiter, and who allocate the destiny even of the gods. Geberah, the fifth Sephirah, is associated with the planet and military deity Mars or Ares, and with the divine judgment and justice. Together with Hesed, it forms the highest vertical axis of the tree of life below the abyss, representing the polarity of providential grace and rejection. From a traditional theistic viewpoint, the alternating currents of mercy and judgment form the furthest visible horizon of divine activity and therefore of the divine presence within the world. Prophets, saints, and mystics have a certain privilege, albeit strictly mediated, access to the levels above the abyss, but for exoteric believers within the domain of history, only providence, as interpreted by the eyes of faith, provides some trace of the absent God. Alternatively, from a Lacanian perspective, the intense theological tension expressed in the alternations of the divine blessings and punishment signifies the ambiguity of the paternal gaze of the big other, which impossibly both affirms and condemns the subject at the same time. The introversion onto the imaginary, called mysticism, discloses the traumatic void of the real, structuring the subject's patterns of Oedipal anxiety. The ideological need for religious traditions to tame and control the subversive atheist recognition of the human imminence of the divine that lies at the bottom of mystical experience has historically led to the elaboration of the platonic dogmatism of so-called negative theology, to which the present discussion provides a constructive alternative. Following the lead of Paul Foster Case, I designate desire, or what Freud called the libido, as Geberah's psychological correspondence, 
but not desire in the sense of self-conscious emotional affectivity, which rather relates to the level of netzach, below the level of conscious self-awareness represented by Tifereth. At the level of Gebura, above or behind Tifereth, the desire in question is still unconscious and stands for the psychological complexes anterior to the level of self-consciousness, or the contents of what Freud called the id. In Lacan's terminology, the id is replaced by the concept of the imaginary, which designates the preconscious chains of semiotic associations that sublimate the subject's libidinal investments, which underlie and pattern their conscious emotional experience, symbolized by Netzach, further down the tree of life. Accordingly, if Bina abstractly signifies the imaginary, then Gebra represents the concrete pattern taken on by the imaginary. It is the historically specific organization of the hermeneutical horizon of being that psychologically conditions how the operations of the lower Sephiroth are oriented, whether in terms of the true will or in self-defeating contradiction. The color red, the color of blood spilt in warfare, corresponds to Geber according to the Golden Dawn system of color symbolism. In a well-known passage of his work, The Tarot, A Key to the Wisdom of the Ages, Paul Foster Case interprets the symbolism of the Rose Bower, depicted in the background of the tarot trump, The Magician, in both the Rider Waite and the BOTA decks. He writes, quote, The arbor of roses over the magician's head represent the desire nature. Here they suggest that the power which the magician draws from above is modified or qualified by desire. This is true of all self-conscious activity. Every moment of our waking consciousness is motivated and conditioned by some type of desire, unquote. Following the system of Golden Dawn correspondences that guide his exegesis, Case links desire to the Sephiroth Geburah in terms of the color red, the number five, and the planet Mars. Quote, the roses are developed from the five-petaled wild rose, and thus they symbolize the number five. Unquote. Quote, the magician's red outer garment represents desire, passion, and activity. Its color is that of the planet Mars, which astrology associates with action and initiative. Unquote. I would push Case's interpretation to more radical implications that he would be comfortable, given the traditional platonic metaphysical framing of his methodology, by applying Hegel's maxim that self-consciousness is desire, self-mediated and independent of any transcendent uh, beyond to the preceding passage. I treat the concept of the power which the magician draws from above as a metaphor for the subject's ac access to the release of their creative drive. Gnostic access to the powers of self-actualization is clouded over by symptomatic distractions caused by psychological complexes as well as by anxieties derived from the Oedipal genesis of the psyche. Rather than relying on the reception of grace from a fictional higher power, the magician should rather engage in a therapeutic process of self-making to liberate themselves to their deepest potential for being. The martial forces of Geburah stand ready to either empower or impede this process, depending on how they are consciously accessed and directed. Along the sub-abyssal horizontal axis of the Tree of Life, Hesed stands for the death drive and Gaburah the life instincts or libidinal dynamic. Hesed's symbolism as concern names the constitutive openness of the psyche's interiority to external social interpolation, through which the subject's negative essence manifests itself as a material, virtual involution of the symbolic order. I read the symptom of the self-evacuation that is the psyche's openness to its world, represented by care in terms of Freud's death drive. Once the dynamic of subjective socialization is in motion, Gaburra's desire designates the function of the life instincts, filling up the space evacuated by concern with libidinal affectivity. Love is the law, love under will.